Hello class. Welcome to InTech 142 Cloud Computing Fundamentals. I'm Professor Dwight Hughes and today we're covering Chapter 1 Introduction to Cloud Computing. The topics we'll cover today include common terms and definitions, a look at virtualization. We're going to skip uh, the history of cloud computing. You'll certainly be able to read that in Chapter 1 if you like. We'll move on to different deployment models for cloud computing, look at some positive and negative indicators for businesses that might be able to take advantage of cloud computing or where cloud computing may not be a good fit. And we'll finish up with the different service categories that cloud computing falls into. Common terms and definitions, there's so many, and the chapter is going to cover a bunch in this section especially, and it's important to take some good notes and write them all down. In general, cloud computing is where the hardware that you're using and the software are typically somewhere else at another location, and there's someone else's responsibility and access over the internet. Often a web browser is the client tool that you'd use on your end to access the services. Some examples might be like Gmail or Facebook. Those are cloud services that you access over the internet using a web browser as your client. Elasticity is the ability to add or remove services, um, shrink and grow, if you will, adding accounts at any time. Oftentimes you pay for what you use. Virtualization allows multiple installed operating systems to run simultaneously on a single computer. And in this next section here, we're going to get into briefly what virtualization is. So when we look at virtualization, it's the ability to load more than one operating system on a device. If you think of, for instance, your cell phone, it has one operating system, Android OS or Apple OS, I guess call it iOS. And you don't have two or three, but you probably have enough hardware power even on your cell phone to run more than one operating system. Most of the time, your cell phone's pretty idle. The CPU and the RAM are not fully engaged. So on a server, class PC, that's a computer with lots of RAM, lots of CPUs, and big hard drives, it has so much physical hardware capacity that one operating system could not possibly take full advantage of all those resources. The idea with virtualization is allowing those pieces of software to be partitioned onto the same hardware so they can um, all use the same physical hardware as if they had their own, but they're sharing. Okay. So I guess really the um, thing to get into is, is the difference between virtualization and cloud computing. And virtualization is a technology to make better use of hardware, where cloud computing is a business model. So cloud computing is really about, again, accessing services across the internet. And virtualization is making better use of physical hardware. So virtualization is a technology we use to enable cloud computing. We're going to skip the early examples of cloud computing. Have fun reading those. I just don't think they're that interesting. And they may not even be that important. Cloud computing deployment models. Cloud computing is a business concept where software is delivered to clients over the internet, so there's minimal local resources. So you don't have a lot of hardware or software to maintain because you've got those in a centralized location. Perhaps even um, it's hardware that you don't own, you're renting it. There's several types of cloud computing then. We can have private clouds. Private clouds are where you own all of the hardware and you have it in a data center, a building somewhere where it's centrally located. And then it's accessible at all the different locations that your workers or employees or customers are at. So that would be called a private cloud. It's only available to your organization. A community cloud is where several organizations get together and they share the hardware and resources and data centers. Um, one example, I was in a meeting recently where we're looking at making a regional SOC. Um, a SOC is a security operations center for community colleges. They wanted to band together across multiple states and share their resources instead of each college or each state even trying to fight the security threats that are on the internet. The idea was to pool some of the resources and costs. 
to be able to more effectively do that. That's a community cloud or like-minded businesses that decide to get into a business arrangement to share their hardware and software resources. And so they share a cl one cloud. They're often within the same industry, maybe in a, a retail industry or in a uh, supply chain, for example. Public clouds um, are available to anyone that can get on the internet. So pretty much anybody can purchase public cloud. Some public cloud is free. Um, you can get free and paid accounts from Amazon Cloud, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and many others. Hybrid clouds are a combination of both. That's pretty popular and realistic that companies wouldn't be in the extreme of a public cloud only where they don't have any um, of their own hardware and resources locally. And they may not be in the extreme where they have all their own hardware and resources. So most fall in the middle where they're going to share some public cloud resources that they pay for as they need them. And they're going to purchase and own some private cloud resources. And that's called a hybrid cloud when you combine both. Positive indicators for cloud readiness. So positive, what type of business um, would be ideal for cloud? Well, elasticity. If your business is best suited as a growth and shrink, so if it gets bigger and smaller all the time, cloud's perfect because you pay for what you use. So when you're not using those resources, you're not paying for them. This is great for startups and other companies that may grow dramatically in the early days of their um, existence. And they may not also have a lot of uh, money. So the number two, investing in local hardware is pretty costly. So again, if you're a startup, you may not have a lot of uh, the money that you need to build the cloud resources that you need to grow. So you can rent them and that's what public cloud is. Similar to utilities, like water and electricity, you pay only for what you use. Negative indicators. So if you have predictable workloads, very stable, flat, you know exactly every day is the same, the CPU is at the same place, you know exactly how much traffic you're running on your network you probably don't need a public cloud. You'd be better off just buying those resources and having a private cloud. Companies that do not grow or shrink dynamically do not really need to scale their computer resource usage. Legal or regulatory requirements can also get in the way. Some companies have certain legal requirements around privacy and reporting that you know, on the public cloud, you don't know exactly where your data is. It's out there on someone else's servers. You may be required to keep it on your own private cloud servers. Cloud reliability is not always enough either. The cloud is reliant on the internet. And so if the internet is slow, the cloud is slow. If the internet has outages and disruptions, you may lose your ability to access the resources that you may need. So military, law enforcement, emergency services, they again may do better building their own privately held um, data centers and their own private connections to those. Maybe cellular 5G, very popular to get into your private cloud. Let's look at the categories. It's getting near the end here. We decide what type of services you're offering on your cloud. So we talked about different types of clouds. Now we talk about different services that you may be offering on your cloud, whether your cloud is private or public. We have XAAS, which is anything as a service. That's the um, catch-all basket. That's anything. So it's just generic for any service that you're offering on the cloud. It's called an XAAS. So we use that if we can't define it as one of the other three. So if it doesn't fall into one of the others, we might just call it XAAS as a, as a catch-all. But the three main categories of cloud services are software as a service. So that's where end users um, access a web app and they use a web browser. And so you'd see that with Gmail, Facebook, those are examples of SaaS. Platform as a service, before like software developers, they allow you to have environments 
um, where you can develop uh, databases and software and, and things like that. And then infrastructure as a service is where they're providing the CPUs and the RAM and the storage, and you install your own operating system and your own software, and so you're essentially running the virtualized hardware. And uh, examples of that would be Amazon S3 or Microsoft Azure. My final thoughts, this chapter is just packed with terminology and classification. Just read it over, take some good notes. I've got some additional readings um, that I want you to do on the web. So when you click on the chapter one reading assignments for this week, you'll see two URL links. One's for Microsoft Azure and the other's a Wikipedia article. Both just very basic, covering the same information as chapter one, but in a slightly different way. So make sure you check those out.